And when it falls, and until Jesus comes, they want to survive. The question is, how do we as Christians, I like that, prepare for the coming days in regard to our necessity supply, food, fuel, etc.? Well, I can't go back over and lay the groundwork for all of you that weren't here last night. So I'm just going to have to go ahead and answer, uh, answer the question, and if I confuse you, I'm sorry. If you've got a pencil and paper, I'm going to give you some information. It will probably save your life. A man named Mal Tippin writes for a magazine called Guns and Ammo. In December 1976, he started a column called Survive. I followed very closely. In fact, I, I really invite that everybody write Peterson. You can go out and buy a copy of Gun and Ammo Magazine, get the address of Peterson Publishers, and write them in Los Angeles, and consult them on how to obtain every back issue of Guns and Ammo from December 1976, just for that two or three page article. It's like a whole college course in one of how to live through those days. And recently, a few months back, he had a question and answer thing. I'm glad that I'm not the only one that has those. This one guy wrote in, I think he put that letter in there just to bless my heart. This guy wrote in and says, you must be nuts. You've got to be the only nut in the world that would say that America is ever going to have any problems that its government couldn't handle. I, I could just be mouth as I know him. Just biting at the bit one to write back, what do you mean any problems they couldn't handle? They're the ones that are going to cause them. But he didn't say that. He said, no, there's quite a few others out there that are just as nuts as I am. Now, that's true in my case. There's quite a few of us out there. You'd be surprised at the names of the people. That's why they all carry a gun, because there's people trying to kill them because they believe this. Now, I'm not going to back up what I'm going to do here tonight. It's going to be a very strange thing for many liberal Christians, many people brought up in very peaceful homes and so on, to hear the things that I'm about to say in a supply list. I'm not going to give you the reasons for them, but I am going to say that everyone has been researched and prayed over extensively by many, many ministers. If you want further information, write Post Office Box 303, Elkton, Maryland, P.O. Box 303, Elkton, Maryland, to Dr. Tom, sorry to say Tom Boy, I got Joe Boyd on my hand. What? Tom Barrett. Tom, Barrett. Tom is probably my second closest friend and I just lost his name. He's going to love me when he hears this tape. Uh, no, <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, I really apologize. That's the Tom. He used to be one of the staff workers, you tell him. He used to be pastor of the church that Dr. Lilly pastors now in Avon. And he pastors Baptist Bible Church in Elkton, Maryland now. Now, he can give you a closer list, but I'll give you a quick one. When you're stocking up supplies, don't be like a lot of Christian retreats that are going to be stocking up supplies for looters to come and kill you so that they can eat. Start with the first thing. Start with the something that will stop somebody from coming through the door and killing everybody in your family. Now, people say, can Christians do that? Killing and defending is two different things. Go read Esther 8. Not only, and I'm counting on getting through hard times by this scripture, not only were they allowed to defend themselves, they picked up the supplies that the people that they defended themselves from were going to use against them. They always did that. But, but do this. And there's no other way to do this. We were talking about this in the back room before the service. I'm just going to have to tell you a couple items. If you don't like gun talk in the meeting, that's all right. We're just going to spend 60 seconds on it. Try to stay within the list that all the Christian retreats are publicizing, mainly because the people that will be trying to kill everybody in the end will be using the same guns, and you'll be able to use their ammunition and parts for yours. Go with, first of all, the number one weapon in everybody's home should be a 12-gauge pump shotgun. I prefer that you choose the Remington 870. Now, for the rest of you people, just have a seat and take it easy for a minute. We're going to get to your questions. These people are interested in something. The next weapon should be a Colt AR-15 assault rifle. The next thing should be, now it depends on whether you choose a semi-automatic handgun or revolver. So many people are going, what's the time guns in here? Just a minute. We'll get to your question. These people want to survive. I want to see them see the Lord come in the air. If you want to go first, go ahead and don't pay attention. (laughs) 
Now, if you choose a handgun, choose only these two. Do not buy a gun, and if you have a gun that's not on this list, sell it and buy something else. I mean that. There's a reason for everything. If you like an automatic, buy a 45 Colt only. And if you like a revolver, buy any type revolver other than Smith & Wesson in the 357 caliber only. No 38, no 9 millimeters, no 44 magnums or anything. 357 only and not Smith & Wesson. Do not buy Smith & Wesson. Do not buy Winchesters. The reason is the Illuminati has decided that if they can't get your guns, they'll make them so bad they'll blow up in your face. And they've recently bought both Smith and & Weston and Winchester and have been putting out very poor guns. This is the idea. So do not buy them. If you own material from them free to 1964, it's fine. But after 1964, the Illuminati owns both companies. All right. After that, for your hunting, because all retreats will be living off the land, because you're not going to go down to... So, uh, liberals or Safeways or any place else, they ain't going to be around anymore for you to buy it. You need to stick with hunting guns only in these three calibers, only. And that is 30 out 6, 30 30, or 308. Okay, now that's enough about guns. Oh, you might want a 22 semi automatic rifle for small game. That's it. Now, we'll get off the guns and make all the other people happy in here. Next, stockpile food. If you're a farmer or if you've got a backyard where your kid's swing is, tear the thing down, tear the grass up, and start planting vegetables. Go down to the store and start buying canning jars. People that lived in World War II will know all about Victory Gardens. We'll call these Jesus Gardens. And start buying food, 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 food. Now, people... I'll show you the importance. Go home, wives, tonight. Your bachelors, men go home, whatever. And if the men do the shopping, they can do it. But go home and open the freezer, the refrigerator, and every food cabinet, everywhere in the house. Gather all the food in. Sit down with the pencil and paper and no cheating. If you put it in one meal, don't put it in another. You can only eat it once. Make up three meals down to the letter. Not make-believe meals, but meals that your family can function on three times a day and find out if you can't go to the grocery store tomorrow how much food you've got to live on. Then you'll see the reason. In the blizzard alone, people were starving in their homes because they couldn't get out for no other reason. What happens when you can't get out at all for every reason? Canned food is impractical. One thing, please, do not store, do not store any tomato product in metal cans. The leading cause of disease in the United States today is lead poisoning. Any tomato product in a can for more than three months contains lead poisoning in it. But I really recommend that you consider buying dehydrated food. And Tom Berry will give you the address of the only Christian company for this. And we, the reason we're using the Christian company is not just because they're Christian. They're the only buy, ones that buy good food, all the other places buy food that places throw out and can't can and stuff, and they freeze dry it because you can't tell what it looks like when it's all shriveled up. Okay? You don't know that the meat's spoiled. It looks like this. I mean, you may, you may have in the palm of your hand a six-course meal. Seriously. Stockpile your food. Food that won't spoil, that you can hold for a couple years. Start stockpiling. Women, when you go to the grocery store and you're buying things, throw in an extra box of salt. Really, go in an extra can of soup or something, or something on this way. Start buying like the farmers buy. They buy and buy and buy in bulk. That's the way you need. You can find a place that will sell you in bulk. That's what you need to do. The churches may do what, what Denny Malney and Tom Berry and Joe Boyd and others are doing. They're buying as a church and forming a co-op and storing the food away. But I'll tell you this, if you don't have three months food supply for three meals a day for every member of your family, Meals that you can live on, not just exist, you don't have any chance at all. And we recommend, seriously, six months to a year. And there's reasons for it. If you weren't here last night, you may reject it. Fine. You know, it's you that's going to be skin and bones, not me. You forget it. No way to store it, really, anyway. All you need is you need medical supplies. You need fuel, I mean food. You need weapons to hunt and defend, and you can't do that job with the same gun. You can't defend yourself with a hunting rifle. It's impossible. Not against the way that it's going to be with the weapons they're going to be using against you. But I, I'll tell you this. 
You can survive in your home for a little bit, but unless you're a member of a Christian retreat or can get one, you'll never make it. Not unless the Lord comes three days after it starts, and I don't believe he will. Now, we're not talking about the tribulation. We're talking about all the days leading up to it. You're not going to have a tribulation as bad as it's going to be unless you're going to have some trouble first. Besides, every country in the world has it except America, and I don't see America's Christian life any better than any other communist country. Okay, I'll make everybody happy. We'll stop on that for a while. If you want, you can follow up on those things and you'll learn all you need. Is Pope Paul and the Catholic Church involved in the Illuminati? I'm a Catholic. Why did you ask me a question that you're not going to like the answer to? Yes, he is. As one person put it, uh, and i got to keep his name quiet so he can stay alive, he was a very big Catholic, and he goes, it's very frightening when you think that the Pope leads your church and he tells you that he takes people's orders from London and, and other places in Brussels that aren't even Catholics that are into the occult. And some things about Pope Paul, I don't expect him to live much longer. I'm expecting really his replacement to be the, the Catholic cardinal that leads the charismatic movement. Uh, they've already proclaimed him to be the next pope. He lost to Pope Paul by two votes anyway. But the thing here is that Pope Paul is the man who told the Catholic Church, and if you haven't heard it, it's so anyway, that it was all right to practice white witchcraft, but it wasn't contrary to Catholic doctrine. Well, I can agree to that. It isn't contrary to Catholic doctrine. Yes, he's part of the Illuminati. The, the whole Congress of Cardinals are. If you get to a retreat, why won't you be found there, and what can folks do who don't have access to a retreat? All right. Two months ago, I could have said that's so, that you don't have access to a retreat. That is not so any longer. If you want part of a retreat, you can be part of a retreat. For one, Freedom Ranch will take everybody to get to be the size of New York City. We'll just pray for the whole state and put a part of it. But all I can tell you is, how many people here own a home? Own a home. You have no excuse that you're not part of a retreat. Now, if you don't believe in it, fine. Then you can just disregard my words. But if you believe that the necessity of being prepared for the end times is real, then here's what you do. Tomorrow, not 60 days from now, you put your home up for sale. You may not like it, but you do it anyway. I did it, and most everybody else has done it. Put your home up for sale, you move into apartments, and you build yourself a home on a retreat, period. The land is free. Almost all retreat lands are free. All you have to do is build a home. Now, the rest of you who don't, most of the retreats have buildings where you can live, and you can always get the saw out and the axe, and there'll be, there are, I know that every one of them is in the pine country in the states that have it. You can always build your own. Your ancestors did. It won't be comparable and like you think of comfort. I mean, you won't be able to watch Starsky and Hutch, but you'll have a lot of time to read the Word. Why won't you be found? You will be. You will be found. The Illuminati and the federal government themselves within the United States knows where every retreat is. But you won't have to worry about the government or the Illuminati trying per se to come and get you. They'll be too busy fighting their own battles in the city. But there will be looting. That's the, that's the reason for retreat. That's the only reason for retreat. The world will go mad before Jesus comes. And you will not be able to survive in the city at that time. Because the demons will direct the people in the looters to your doorstep before they'll send them anyplace else. So, while you're standing there rebuking them and expecting them to fall over, I'll be using a shotgun because I want my family to live. A lot of people shaking their hands. That doesn't sound Christian. That's fine. You haven't had anybody shoot at you yet. You have not had anybody shoot at you. I've got three kids and a wife, and I've had people try to shotgun them to death, blow them up, machine gun them, knife them, poison them, and everything else. I love my family. I'm not going to let my family die. Now, which is murder? Letting somebody kill them or defending them? So stop shaking your head at me. I'll bow my head and pray and uh, a prayer for you when they put you under. See, I talk bold about this because I have to live with it, and it's coming to your doorstep. Everybody taps me on the back and says, oh, Brother Todd, I feel so sorry for you, all these people trying to kill you. I said, don't feel sorry for me, I feel sorry for you, at least I'm prepared for what's coming. And I am, too. One of the, 
Two main reasons I'm alive is that God keeps me alive through his warning and my preparedness. And they cannot do anything to you when you're prepared. But the idea of the retreats are they're all in locales that can be defended and they're almost impregnable. And believe it or not, the more people there, the better it is. Okay? Get off this retreat now. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know who wrote this. Jay Howe, but I love whoever it was. Larry Flint, was he a true convert by Ruth Cardo Stapleton? Yeah. Well, go right. <laughs> Don't you like that question? I love it. Yes, he was a true convert by Ruth Cardo Stapleton. Yeah, he, was. he sure was. But then Ruth is probably the most powerful witch that I ever met. I used to study under her. <gasps> yeah! Turn it on next Sunday now. Uh, okay. What is the involvement of the Illuminati? They've got a CRR and then they write it out, Council for Relations at CFR, and the Trilateral Commission and the Rockefellers. You, whoever wrote this wasn't here last night, right? Right, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> That's what we talked about last night. The CFR is the name of the Illuminati in the United States. David Rockefeller is the second most powerful man in the Illuminati. He runs the Council of Formulations. And the Trilateral Commission is the United States version of the European Common Market. And most people don't realize that America is a member of the European Common Market through the Trilateral Council. And that the Trilateral Commission, or not Council, Commission, is the brain center of the CFR. And our <clears throat> born-again Christian president is a member of it. You'll just have to let me read some of these in a minute. Oh, yeah. The John Birch Society has exposed the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Illuminati, and many parts of the world conspiracy. Why do you have it listed as a hate group? Gary Allen, author of the books you mentioned, is associated with the John Birch Society. And that's not much saying much for the Birch Society since Gary Allen has said across the country that the problem with America is the fundamental church. I'm going to say this again. Took some time on this last night. I think that a group that gives half troops truths is worse than a group that is totally ignorant. It is a hate group because it is anti-Semitic. Its platform and the American Nazi platform and the Klan platform are almost identical. And I have them looked for together as part of the Illuminati, not by guesswork, but because I used to have to hand checks to the leaders of the Birch Society. The Birch Society is just like the Masons and many other groups. The point is that people will in them and that work with them and so on know nothing of their leaders above it. That's why we say over and over, have nothing to do with a group that you don't know 100% about. And when a group tells me they're good and they have secrecy, I say, why, if you're good? You only need secrecy if you're bad. That's why I have men that know everything that I do 24 hours a day, and they know everything about my ministry since I've been saved. But when accusations come up, these people will go and do the defending for me. I will say this. They say parts. But then they add. They mention these. But they make the head of the Illuminati the Rockefellers. And the Rockefellers are not the head of the Illuminati. Second, they make it a Zionist conspiracy. It is not a I'm not a Jew. Nothing wrong with being a Jew, but I'm not. And not one member on the Grand Druid Council is a Jew. And not one member on the Council of 33 is a Jew. And only about eight people on the Council of 500, the Bilderbergers, are Jews. They say, well, the Rothschilds are Jews. So what? They may have been Jews a long time ago, but they are not Jews now. They believe Lucifer is God, and Jews do not believe Lucifer is God. They are the synagogue of Satan. There is a difference. And it's not a Zionist conspiracy. What do I think is wrong with Star Wars? About everything. One is that everybody that signs a contract on Star Wars is an initiated witch and had to prove what brotherhood they belonged to before they could star. I was like, oh, really? 
Yes. Now, this is fact from talking with the people who produced the show. Second, the guy who played Luke Starwalker on the show, some of you from having the television bug, may realize that he starred in the premiere of Eight is Enough. They had him to a contract, and he wanted out of it, because, he did, because it became a series. And he said, I want out of it. And they said, no. And they said, well, we're going to do a follow-up of Star Wars called Star Trails, which is so. And I want out of it. And you better let me out of it if you know what's good for you. And, and they said, no. And they said, well, I'll just finish your show. I'll cast a spell and, quit and kill one of the leading stars, which he did. They let him out of the contract because he turned to the producer and says, you're next. The real reason for Star Wars is that five of the major doctrines of witchcraft are taught all the way through the movie, and that the statistics coming in now are over one million people have joined witchcraft because of the movie since it's now. Now, I talked with the man who handled all the publicity for the movie. He verified everything I'm saying. He also said that I said, well, I guess about 75%, and I still believe that, 75% of the movie was witchcraft. He said, no, only about 45. I said, well, what about Star Trek? He said, oh, that's 95%. I said, well, what about making everybody in witchcraft in it? He said, oh, they are. Everybody in it has to be. I said, well, who's going to be the new star? And he said, oh, the guy, and you probably won't know his name, so I'll tell you who he plays. All you women that like soap operas. He played Snapper on Young and Restless. Now, that's not unusual, since the three major soap operas, you must be a witch before you star in them. Young and Restless was the last to go. That's why there was a big change over in Young and Restless staff recently. The other two are All My Children and Secret Storm. So, if you parents think that your kids are the ones that get it all because of the rock music... <laughs> Is Larry Flynn a witch? No, he's a charismatic. He says he talks in tongues regular to Peter and Paul, and they come and visit him in person and have dinner with him. <laughs> oh, well, Ruth Gar Stapleton told him that that's the way it was supposed to be. My, my, is a six-pointed star. We, <laughs> is it engagement ring? My engagement ring is a six-pointed star. Would that, would, would that have spirits attached, or is it just silly? Not silly. Could you go and have your fiancé exchange it for another one? Huh? Well, I'll put it to you this way. There was an extremely high woman in the Eastern Star in Atlanta, Georgia, last Sunday night. And she brought her Eastern star up and asked me what the five-point star with two points up was, and I told her, gave her all the facts on it. The ring was had about eight diamonds in them. Two of them were over a carrot. She took it home and threw it in the fireplace. I mean, you do what you want. My wife said, pull the diamonds up first. <laughs> no, actually, she said, pull the diamonds up first and, and, you know, give them to the Lord or something like that. But she did. She got rid of the ring. Where does faith apply? Where does faith in the promises of God apply in the end? Well, if I let me tell you something. I talk a lot about the end times, and I'm sorry that people get afraid when I talk about the end times. But then, if Jesus was Lord in everybody's life, there wouldn't be any fear. I'm not afraid of the end times. You know, the Christians that went to the thing went rejoicing. You see, back then, you only had a sword. And when they sent a legion, which was a hundred soldiers after you, one sword wasn't going to stop a hundred with a sword. But today, one rifle could stop a hundred with a rifle. This is something you have to decide. I mean, if you dig martyrism, you know, go on ahead. But the thing about faith in the promises of God is that I have faith that God is going to let me know when it's going to happen and it's going to let me get prepared for it. Now, you can imagine how many Christians, there were 20 million Christians died in communist countries when the communists took over in brutal ways. And they were warned. And they listened to other ministers, just like the people in Jerusalem listened when Jeremiah tried to warn Jerusalem that it was going to fall. Just like people listened to other people when Noah tried to warn people that it was going to rain. We're going to have a lot of people that's going to be like the people in Noah. They're going to be looking up like this, and then when the rain starts hitting on them on the head, they'll get the message. When the bullets start coming through the door, when you can't go to the grocery store, 
and your electricity is turned off and it's 50 degrees outside and you're freezing to death, you'll say, I wonder if I can make it to the retreat. Well, you won't be able to then. All I can tell you is that I believe firmly in the promises of God and therefore I believe that I am going to see the end times. I believe that I am going to come through it. But if I came to your door and I said your house was on fire and you said, ah, uh, my house is fireproof. I went back up and laid down. You burned up. It's not my fault. I'm trying to tell you the house is on fire. It's up to you whether you get out of it or not. Okay? I firmly believe in the promises of God, and that's why I believe I'm going to make it. And I believe that God has given a much to us ministers a little insight on the end times. You know, I could be a very big minister in this country, have a lot of people back me that I don't want to back me. All I have to do is close my mouth about three things. The charismatic movement, the masons, and what's going to happen to Christians in the last days. I can't do it. I can't let the two groups go untouched and let the people in them not hear the truth. I can, in all honesty, go up to my retreat, close the doors, and sit there eating food. And, and now, see, retreats aren't to stay and hide it. They're to go put your family in and go back out and minister and have a safe place to go to. I don't plan on hiding in those days. I may have to carry a Bible and a gun at the... Come think of it, I did that anyway. But... Uh, I, I plan on fully to keep on ministry. That's why most of the retreats have printing presses in them. But I can tell you this, that I will survive this thing and I will not sit up there in a retreat feeling guilty over anybody else out there because I'm going to make sure that every place I'm at, they know about it or I won't go there. Do you feel J.R. Tolkien, the author of The Hobbit and other series, has wrote any of his books on the basis of witchcraft? Many of the themes in the books are those used to... This person couldn't have been here last night. Every book written by J.R.R. Tolkien, including the Philomelon, just finished by Christopher, and you'll find Christopher's name on those handouts, was not written by him. Until Tolkien wrote these, these things used in witchcraft, as you put it, were secrets to witchcraft. And Tolkien was a member, along with another gentleman I'm going to mention in a minute, both were supposed confessed born-again Christians, but both were members of the Golden Dawn. That's the Rothschild's private church in London. It's the oldest colon in the world. And he gained order, he gained permission both from the council and the Rothschild personally to take things from the Book of Shadows, the Witchcraft Bible, and print them in books. You may think that the Hobbit and the books of the triology, like the Lord of Rings and Two Towers and so on, and the Silmaron are fairy tales. But they're the gospel to witches. According to witches, those things really did take place. If you've got them in your home, you wouldn't own a Satanist Bible. At least I hope you wouldn't. Pray for you if you would. And you wouldn't own a witchcraft Bible. Why would you own part of the witchcraft Bible? Now, you can go, don't do this, but you could go to the occult stores and you could pick up many books that came out after the Hobbit came out that bear the alphabet of witchcraft, the runes. But the Hobbit released them first, and they were secret upon the penalty of death till then, and nobody could have written them that had not been in witchcraft. Now, there's a Christian author whose books are sold in every Christian bookstore. That's why I don't like Christian bookstores who claims that Tolkien went into the Lord. He forgot to say what Lord. And his books are required reading before you can join a coven, required studying. His name is C.S. Lewis. You pray about it, but they should go in the fireplace right along. And I'm going to quote from one of Lewis's books. The pathway to God is like a hall with many doors. They all lead to God. Not on your life. Jesus says that anybody comes other than through him is a thief and a robber. Should a Christian in any capacity physically prepare for hmm. Should a Christian in any capacity physically prepare for the impending takeover? When I prayed for questions like this, I didn't know if we get so many. Well, I already told you yes. If you don't, you're the one who's going to have to look at your wife or your husband or your kids and say, I'm sorry, I can't stop them from coming in the house. What should fundamental Christians do in the light of things we've learned? Pray a lot. Read a lot of the Word of God. Win as many souls as you can before you're going to go to jail for it. And prepare for the end times. Who is the son of Satan and who is he by name? Well, you've got son of Satan. 
They don't call him son of Satan, they call him son of Lucifer, they call him Adam. And he's a person that has a sister that's a witch, has a beer drinking brother, <laughs> and says he's born again but only has the fruit of the devil. I think that'll survive. <laughs> See, I'm not like a bunch of Christians that I had to put up with for four years telling me that Henry Kissinger was going to be the Antichrist. I say the things I say because I saw his name in a letter written by Philip Rothschild that says everything the Illuminati is going to do over the next eight years is to make the man of peace and gave his name and then let's see him as Adam, Adam, the son of Lucifer, to bring peace to this world. So they're backing totally. You know, the peanut farmer. <laughs> I'm going to kind of change this question around a little. It says, does John Kennedy's assassination play into it? John Kennedy was killed because he became a Christian. We talked about it last night. If you want to know about it, contact this pastor. He'll give you a tape of it. What is G? Mr. Todd, what do you look for in the eyes of witches? Well, you'd have to know what the eye. I can line five people up in witchcraft or the occult, line five people up that aren't in it, and you'd understand what I mean. But I'll give you some people's eyes to look at. Ruth Carter Stapleton, Jimmy Carter, um, Cindy Williams, Carol King, Kate Jackson, Karen Fawcett Majors, Faye Dunaway, everybody on the three soap operas I named. After a while, you'll get them. You'll get the idea. Is there a government within the government of the United States? And what is it called? Yes, Illuminati. Is there one earthly leader of the Illuminati? If so, who is he? Little prop shop. Are the Christians to take the card of the 666? The Bible says in the hand or the forehead. As I said last night, you're not going to believe that an angel is going to come down and tap to you in the hand and the forehead and it says that God's people are going to be killed that way. No, I firmly believe that, as many people know about Bible prophecy, the uh, forehead is the mind and the hand is your works. And man, you're going to take it there if you're not with the Lord when it comes. Besides, the card is the way they're, they're planning on passing it out. Of course, they were planning on passing out world currency several years ago. They're always changing plans. If you don't like what I said, stand on the street corner and probably change in a year. Are you putting a time limit on the time of the Antichrist? When will he come? I'm just saying, like I said last night, the Illuminati believe that they're going to gain the world by the end of the year that starts the age of Aquarius. That's 1980. They believe it by an eight-year plan that I've seen. I have not seen anything go wrong with that plan yet. Now, should something go wrong? Should this country start serving God? I'm sure, because the Illuminati believes that the only way they're going to gain control of the world is through America. Not through Russia, for all you communist towns, but through America. Now, if America gets saved, naturally they're going to lose it. Then that would take a mass revival upon the Christians' hearts first, and I do not believe that God's kids are ever going to grow up long enough to have one of those. What part, it says here, what does the inducing ceremony, I guess that means uh, initiation ceremony, for the witches involved, the same thing that, it, that you do to become a mason, you do to become a witch. What part do demons play in the writing and performing of rock music? Everything. 100%. There isn't a record album you buy that has not been cast on by a colon when the tape was first done. That's mandatory. That's required. And a demon is ordered to go with every rock album, rock album that comes off of that master tape. So you can go home and count how many demons you got alone. He mentioned last night that when Congress begins arguing that we should begin digging for information about laws being passed, my question is how and where do we look, who do we question, so forth. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I get my information from places you can't, but all I can tell you is you could try. There are some independent groups in uh, Washington that try to expose things, but since they're not Christians, I don't have anything to do with them. I don't know. I guess you could listen to Joe Boyd and Jack Howes and Tom Berry and John Todd and other people a lot. You know what's happening. I really don't know. We're going to start this summer producing a newsletter. 
If you want on it, uh, you can uh, write us. I guess that's about the best thing. Uh, our address is back there, and the man running the book stand has an envelope. Don't take the envelope. Just copy the address off of it. It's not the envelope we passed out. We only have one left. Uh, and we'll send you the thing free of charge. We're going to try and keep up on all the laws and the things that are happening. We're also going to be saying a lot more about surviving in the end times. Without the law, the devil has no power. What is the law? The law. The old law. The Old Testament law. He bases all of his upon the law. Not not so much the commandments and stuff like this, but... Uh, well, let's put it this way. Everything outside of grace is law. It's like everything outside of being a Jew is a Gentile. I got a question. What is it? That's the question. I don't know. What is it? That's the question. I don't know. What is it? What is it? Since witchcraft is so prevalent, why have so few of us heard anything about it? so few of us heard anything about it? Well, if you haven't heard anything about it, you must have been living in a vacuum. You must never watch television. Praise the Lord if you don't. You must never read the newspaper. You must never listen to the radio. And you must never listen to probably the most preachers. You must never walk into a Christian bookstand, bookstore. I didn't know that anybody didn't know that witchcraft was the fastest growing thing in the United States today. Okay, I'm going to try and rush through these real quick because we're running out of time. What about... Will the Christians be taken out in the rapture before the card is issued? I have no idea. I can't answer that. I'm not that good a Bible scholar, I guess, on it. I can read it both ways. Okay? Personally, I think that since it is going to be tried out in the United States before it's tried on the world, I think you'll probably see it. I believe that personally. Whether you want to believe it, fine. When you can't go to the grocery store anymore because you don't have it, don't say I didn't tell you. But I think that before it is ordered for the world to take it, we'll be gone. When it's first passed out, it won't be, if you don't take it, I'm going to cut off your head. It'll be, if you don't take it, you're not going to eat. You're not going to buy. You're not going to sell. Later, if you don't take it, you're a danger to society and you must be put away. Where is this Christian retreat? Will it be open for Christians? Yes, it will be open for Christians. In fact, Christians can come and live there any time they want to build a house. If you don't want to build a house there and you want to come there later, you'll have to get with one of these escape routes and work it out from them because we're not going to open the doors for a bunch of people to come out there and camp when we're trying to get people out of the occult right now. You'll just have to wait till uh, times are so bad that you'll believe. See, the interesting thing about a retreat is that you're going to get up there and you're going to say, oh, this isn't so bad. We're up here. And then you're going to want to go back like lots of life. Well, that's because things are good because where you're at. Now, if you want to go back to the city and get yourself killed, that's all right. But we're, we're going to wait till it's so bad that nobody's going to still say that I'm crazy. They're going to say, why didn't we listen soon? What did you mean last night? When